Hey guys, I'm Dan, and it's been a long time since I have made any guitar building content, but it's good to be back. I decided today, as I was testing out the new Fox Alien XE Ultra, that I would make a couple of DIY guitar kits to give to my kids for Christmas. All right, I'm Dan, this is Guns Guitars, so let's get started. Now this isn't gonna be a full review of the XE Ultra. Um, really, I'm kind of just rushing this video to you guys because Fox Alien has a really good Christmas sale and I was really hoping to get some video up before the Christmas sale. But the XE Ultra usually will run you about, I don't know, like $1,800, uh, but they're 20% off right now, which puts it below 1500, which is just outstanding for a machine this size and capable. And if you pair it with the 1.5 kilowatt spindle, Again, it would probably run you about $2,300, $2,400, um, but you basically get that spindle for free during this sale. So uh, again, that's kind of the reason why I'm rushing this video out to you. So it's not really a full review video of the XE Ultra, and it's not really a tutorial on building guitar kits. It's really just kind of unboxing the machine and testing it. So I wanted to show you real quick how this thing comes out of the box. It's about as plug and play as it gets for a machine this size. So they've already put together your Y axis, your X axis, and your Z axis. You just have to connect your Z gantry to the X axis. And then you've got your computer and then all your cables pre-loomed and ready to go. So assembly on this is probably only gonna be about an hour Maybe two because I'm probably gonna make some mistakes and have to redo some steps. And then I'm also extremely thorough. I like to lock tight all the bolts and stuff. So maybe two hours for me, one hour for the average person. Um, but if you remember, you can see uh, we are sitting inside the footprint of the long mill, which is my favorite CNC machine to date. Um, and this thing just barely fits. So that gives you a good idea about how large this machine is. It has a massive footprint. And if we're gonna compare assembly time to the long mill, the long mill came in a lot more pieces. It took me about six hours to build it. And so if you're, I mean, obviously if you're a CNC person, you probably don't mind the assembly part. That's kind of part of the fun part, right? But if you need to order a machine and have it put together in the morning and be making stuff by the afternoon, this is definitely the one to get. All right, I got the machine all set up and ready to rock. We're gonna do a test cut right here. Uh, we're gonna test a couple things. One, I'm just really just doing a three inch square so I can measure and make sure that this machine is calibrated properly. And then also I have a new bit that I'm testing out. This is from IDC Woodcraft. This is the hog. And this is an industrial grade bit that is rated for insane speeds and feeds, uh, far beyond probably what this machine is capable of. And so that'll allow us to actually push this machine until we see it miss steps. Um, it's also going to test the strength of my um, hot glue clamps. Um, it's possible that this thing might break free and we have a disaster on our hands. Right now, I'm starting out really conservative at 40 inches per minute um, feed rate, uh, 19,000 RPM. We're doing a quarter inch depth per pass. That is deeper than I've ever done on any material ever. And a 50% step over. Now those are actually really conservative values for this bit carving through MDF, but we're gonna start there and then we'll just keep repeating this test all the way up until we get to the max of what this bit is capable of and we'll see at what point the machine or the spindle no longer likes it. All right, well that was extremely simple and handled it no problem. Could definitely go deeper and I, I did the first pass at 60 inches per minute, second pass I did at 80 inches per minute which is the recommended speed for this bit. Um, of course, it recommends up to a three quarter inch depth. So let's let's double it, let's go up to a half inch. Okay, set up to do another three inch square here. And this time we're doing half inch depth per pass. Uh, I slowed it down to 40 inches per minute and 50% step over. Let's give it a shot. Well, that was really fast and honestly, totally insane. Let's vacuum it up and have a look. I gotta be honest, I didn't expect that. Uh, this is pretty insane. So let's actually go the full rate that this bit is rated for. We're gonna go, we're gonna do a full three quarter inch pocket out of this thing. And we'll start again at 40 inches per minute and ramp it up to 80 inches per minute and see if the machine can keep up. All right, guys, this is the moment of truth here. I have never run a hobby grade CNC machine this hard before. So this should be fun.
Well, crap. <laughs> the machine was stronger than my clamps and I broke my bit, gosh darn it. Now, Fox Alien sent me that machine basically saying, we think this is gonna be a competitor for the long mill. And you guys know that I love my long mill. So that is a very bold statement. And in fact, I wasn't even considering taking it until I looked at the specs. And I saw this thing had a nice big 33 by 33 inch cut area. Uh, that's big enough to do two guitar bodies and necks all at once, right? It has steel ball screws. It's got linear guide rails and ball bearings. I mean, this machine is super strong, super rigid. Of course, it's got Fox Aliens new uh, closed loop high torque stepper motors. And so I decided I'd give it a shot and just kind of put it up against the long mill. Again, I'm not really done testing, but uh, so far it does feel like it's better than the long mill in every way it's set for cut area. The long mill is just a little bit bigger. Um, but again, further testing will determine that. I did hit the limits of the long mill in some of my testing, but I have yet to hit the limits of the XE Ultra. So far, the machine has just done everything that I've asked it to do with flying colors. And look at all these beautiful wood chips. That's the sign of a good CNC machine when you're making wood chips and not sawdust. Now, the good news is that IDC Woodcraft decided they are gonna replace my broken hog bit even though it was my fault. And I was honest with them that it was my fault that the clamping system came loose and the bit broke. And they said, hey, we've got a no questions asked policy, so we'll send you a new one. So I'm excited when that bit comes to again, push this machine to its limits. Um, but of course, this time I'm actually gonna screw my material down instead of trying to use hot glue. That was, that was definitely my bad. Another thing that I'm looking forward to testing in the full review video is that because this machine is so rigid, and I've got the one and a half kilowatt spindle, I can do some metal work with it, okay? I can carve up some softer metals like aluminum and brass, and I've got some really cool ideas to make some hardware, um, a bass bridge and a guitar tremolo that I'm very excited about. So I'm excited to put that to the test. I just don't have those materials or bits that I would need to mill those materials, and I won't be able to get those in time for Christmas. And again, I just wanted to get this video out to you before Christmas, because if you're in the market for a CNC machine, uh, I wanted you guys to be able to take advantage of that Christmas sale. It's a really great sale. Yeah, again, I, you know, I think this machine needs further testing, but so far it certainly lives up to its specs, okay? I've not been able to push this machine to a point of failure where it's missed steps, and I did push it to the limits of the router bit that I was using to carve up these guitar bodies. And so I'm very impressed. Typically on the long mill, it would take me at least an hour each side. So I figure about two hours for a guitar body carve, and I was able to do that in almost half the time. Um, maybe like two thirds of the time with this machine, which is super cool. So super time saver. Now, had I not messed up my roughing bit, then I probably would have been able to do it in even half that time. So we're talking nearly a quarter of the time uh, to do it on this machine versus the long mill. So overall, yeah, like I said, I'm super impressed. Uh, I can't give it my full stamp of approval yet. I'm going to be doing a full review video here uh, in a few weeks. But for now, it's time to wrap these things. I'll be doing an update video after Christmas when my kids unwrap this and we'll build them and we'll test them. And I am curious, a lot of you probably clicked on this video because you thought that I was making custom guitar kits for Christmas. And I don't have time to do that for Christmas, but I am toying with the idea of building some kits. So I'm curious if you guys like my designs, uh, what you guys would be willing to pay for a neck and body only kit. Uh, obviously it doesn't make sense for me to bundle up all the gear to go with it, but to be able to sell you a neck and body that you can then assemble with whatever parts you want, let me know what you'd be willing to pay for that. And then I'm also curious what you'd be willing to pay if you got to design your own body. So like literally like doodle up a shape, tell me like pick up, layout, bridge, tremolo, all that stuff, all the cavities, and let me know what you'd be willing to pay for something like that, because these are two new designs. I know that the, the base resembles the behemoth design that I've done before, but it is a 30 inch short scale base, so it's a little bit different. Um, so I did have to redraw it, as well as uh, this is an entirely new prototype, which if you know that my base is called behemoth, you could probably guess that that one's gonna be called the Leviathan, that's right, you guys are so smart with your Bible knowledge. So pretty excited for that, basically it just means dragon, which is super cool. Um, so let me know what you think of the new shapes, but basically the reason why I tell you that is that I did have to draw up new designs, so I have a good idea of how long it's gonna take me to create a CNC file, and so I'm just curious if there's a market for that too. So let me know down in the comments. It's good to see you guys. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in the next video.